Hello everybody and welcome to the part 3 of how to make this DIY speaker cab where we're going to give this thing some guts. Welcome to part 3 of this DIY speaker cabinet build. If you haven't checked out parts 1 and 2 and would like to do that, there will be links to those in the description below. My goal in building this cabinet was to make my own acoustic guitar amplifier or one man PA system similar to acoustic guitar amps that you can buy that usually have a mic input and guitar input to amplify a singer, songwriter, musician. For that end, I picked up a cheap eBay four channel mixer, a master treble bass volume unit, and a 100 watt amplifier board. I then wired up everything for testing, so just microphone into the mixer preamp board, then into the master volume and treble bass control board, and lastly into the power amplifier. All of the boards that I got run on 12 volt power, so I hooked everything up to that and tested it out. And at this point, everything seemed promising. Now, when preparing the cabinet for the electronics, you may have noticed all the way back in part one that I covered the control cavity in aluminum foil. In my effort to block out unwanted noise and interference, I tried to create a shielded enclosure around the electronics by simply using spray adhesive to glue down some aluminum foil. I did that way earlier and ended up just redoing it as it got all messed up during the hole drilling and tolexing of the cabinet. So I would suggest kind of doing that as late as you can. So once I had all that set, I started making the control panel. First I cut to rough shape, making sure it was bigger than the hole in my cabinet so I would have some overhang to screw into and attach the panel. Next I traced out the opening and then laid out the parts that I needed to get on the panel in a nice way. It helps to draw a center line down the middle to line everything up with the top and bottom, and then I just found an equal spacing that looked right for all of the components. Once those were all set, I used a punch to mark the holes and then drilled them out using a step bit. Once I drilled the main hole for the XLR plug, I dropped them both in and used a straight edge to line them up with each other, thus making them straight and square, and then marked and drilled the smaller holes for the screws to hold them down. Then I cleaned up any rough patches with a file. Now rough scuffed up aluminum is not very attractive, but it isn't hard to get that brushed aluminum look. I simply clamped down two boards in my vise to give me a fence to sand against. Then I taped down my panel parallel to the backboard. Then using 220 grit sandpaper on a sanding block, I ran it parallel to that fence, keeping nice straight lines until all the imperfections were out of the panel. After it was looking pretty good, I used a green scouring pad to clean up any last scratches, and you can see that the panel ends up looking a lot better. I then marked and drilled the holes to mount my power amplifier and other electronics into the enclosure, and then fit the whole electronics compartment into the cabinet using the blocks that we attached to the sides way back in part one to screw into the side of the cabinet. Then wired up all the electronics using an old shielded microphone cable to try and cut down on the noise, and when that was finished, I mounted everything into the cabinet. Now, despite all the holes that I drilled in part two, I still managed to forget one, and that was the hole in the back panel that needed to fit the power connector and switch. I used a cardboard box to figure out the weird shape of hole that I needed, and then when the switch fit in the box, I transferred that shape to my panel. Then I drilled a hole in the middle and then cut the shape out with a coping saw. Not the end of the world, but just goes to show how important it is to make sure you got every hole drilled in part two. Then I fit everything into the back of the cabinet, attached the back panel with the screws through the corners, popped the knobs on the top, and turned it on. Test, test, test. <sighs> okay, so it definitely works, but in my opinion, because of that background noise and interference that you heard, I don't trust this speaker enough to use live in front of people. Now, I've already spent a ton of time troubleshooting and trying to shield and ground everything better, 
But I think it comes down to a matter of you just get what you pay for with the cheap mic pre and mixer that I'm using, and it just introduces way too much noise. So you could certainly just use the amplifier and the speaker and send a line level signal into this speaker, which would make it essentially just a really giant Bluetooth speaker without the Bluetooth, which would be great if all you kind of wanted to use this for was like a powered monitor. If you had like a PA system already and you could feed a line out of your board into this and use it as a monitor wedge or something like that. But for what I wanted it to be, it doesn't really hold up, which is unfortunate. So I hate to leave you with that kind of unsatisfying ending, but I need a break from this project. I've already spent way too much time on it. So let me know in the comments below if you have any ideas or thoughts on how to solve this problem or anything else that you noticed. And in the meantime, thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.